sure a lot of topical stuff uh, here that we don't have. Then plus K100 talks. Uh, we reiterated earlier that uh, if you want to hear about Conan's Hall of Fame experience, that's on our K100 talk show, which is on all these platforms. Um, and we go into very a lot of detail about your experience there and stuff. So. Uh, the first is from Darren Walker, and the subject is, Can Tessa Blanchard restart her career? Hi, guys. Do you think Tessa Blanchard could restart her career? La Rosa Negra just tweeted a picture of her and Tessa and tweeted they sort issues out. Or will the cancel culture brigade, brigade never forgive Tessa, even though Rosa has? Darren Walker, London. Um, I think mm. the punishment uh, has exceeded the crime with Tessa Blanchard. Okay, because she's been basically canceled because of reports of maybe racist comments she made to somebody that were never, like, could never be corroborated of whether or not it was actually true or not. So somebody said something bad about her. It was about racism. And immediately the social justice warriors decided that... Well, it was this that... girl, Rosa Negra, they're talking about she took a picture with it. It was her. I, I don't know. I don't know. This. I don't know what's going I on do here, know. But... Yeah. Oh, you know, okay. So La, La Rosa Negra. So who is who is La Rosa Negra? You know her, right? She's, she's a Puerto Rican wrestler. Okay. She was the one and that she, had the initial issue with Tessa. Oh, she's the, she's yeah. the one that accused her. Yes. Right. Oh, so so they sorted their issues out, right? Right. Well, after okay. So what is what together, is yeah. what's what's the holdup? If yeah. the person oh, that, because like, it you're doesn't accused, matter if the it person matter is forgiving the person you, right. you, they haven't forgiven you. That's the problem. They want you to. Right. They, bro, here's the thing about cancel culture that you've learned and I've learned. They don't forgive. They don't forget. They just destroy. That's all right. they're after, you know? Yeah. That's why I got a lot of heat for using Alberto and using Marty Scorn. And it's like, are we supposed to not let them ever like, work well, I, ever like, again? Like, like literally, like, okay, what are your rules for the punishment fits the crime as opposed to right. what I think I think the rules should be, and I'm the one in right. charge. Right. I'm the one making the decision. I think he's done enough punishment. I think these guys have suffered enough. I'm going to get them back to work because, honestly, I think going forward, we're not going to have an issue with these guys anymore. Right. And like, bro, so, and so I got, it's that and simple, I got, right? It's like, and I got letters from people that I know were well-intentioned, but they're, oh, you're going to be blackballed. Nobody's going to work with you. AEW's not going to work, all this other stuff. Not like I really don't give a – you know, I'm not here to please anybody. I, I think I know, I'm right. Yeah. I right. think you guys are all – be way too judgmental. Look in right. the mirror if you want right. to be that. Like, like you, you're perfect. Like you, you, you want to judge Marty Squirrel like by standards that you would not, but want to be judged as yourself, right. right? It's like I'm going to give these guys a chance if they've suffered enough. And it's like right. it's funny. And, that, and, that, like, and with the caveat, with the caveat, if they fuck up because they know they're being scrutinized, right. I won't work with them again. Right. So what's what's the point? I'm giving this guy a chance. I think he's going to be an exemplary employee going forward, and we're, having, we're going to have no issues with this person for the conversation I've had with him and, and their self-awareness of where they exist in this climate going forward. It's like, right. and they're talented. Right. I'm, going to, I'm going to use talent because I'm providing content for people. Like, you know, I'm trying to draw numbers. I'm trying to, like, you know, I think these guys are talented. I'm going to use them. You know? And if these guys weren't the talented, very... it, it, it wouldn't be a conversation because nobody nobody give a – Right? Very, and yeah. in the very little sample size that I've worked with both, they've been nothing but exemplary. Right. You know? Cool. Good for you. So next is from Daniel Preston at Peace Now, and the subject is Vince has his hands on creative. Hey, K100 crew. Hope you're all well. I just finished watching the post of Raw, and I'm starting to think Vince has more creative control than Hunter, especially with main eventers. Let's look at Cody. Huge push leading to the main, main event. The jobs to Roman. And... <sighs> Bro, these people, like, like, these smart marks use these comments like, Jobs to Roman. Like, it's like that, that match. Like you don't watch a match. Say Cody job to Roman. Like like coming out. Like if that's that's your 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 IQ and wrestling coming out of that you you have no clue to talk about. So the rest of this email is from a person that doesn't know what he's talking about. And the following night is destroyed by Lesnar. And knowing the way Vince is protective of Brock of his win loss record, there's no way Cody is coming out victorious in this feud. Is this Vince's way of shitting on Cody for leaving a few years back? Teasing this push, then crushing him against top guy sure looks like it. Thoughts? Daniel P's now? You're an idiot. You don't, yeah. like, you've never been in the writer before. This was, bro, <laughs> they're going to have a match. Okay? Cody and Brock are going to have a match. And the obvious story here is, is Brock is like, should kill Cody with his bare hands, which is what he just did. Okay? Now, I will agree, if Brock goes and squashes Cody in their match, 
I would agree, agree like, okay, yeah, you were right, Dave. Like, he's gonna, but this has, like, all the telltale booking, like, signs of a baby face fighting a mon, you know, like, like getting sympathy and everything, a fighting guy and beating this guy. Like, like, would be the obvious, you know, booking, and it's done very well because Cody's, very, Cody sold very well in that. You know, what, what, what do you think about that, Conan? Like, like this well, is... I don't think that Vince would have flown to his house and he's got one of the biggest contracts in WWE, probably one of the top three, has a grip of merchandise, okay? Because even mm-hmm. the merchandise people told me, so he's making a lot of money on that, okay? Right. And giving him this push just to teach him a lesson. You know what I'm saying? So, so And that's, um, that, bro, that's a guy that's listened to the Mark podcasters because that, right. that was kind of like the – the narrative, like I was listening to some sound bites from these guys, and they're just, bro. The, the people that have never been in the writing room are clueless. They do not know how to write stories. Like they, they've, no, they see like, oh, Cody got buried. Now, like, no, Cody, like, like you really gonna, are looking. Come on, go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna play devil's ad- advocate for a moment, and let's just say that Vince didn't think Cody was the guy, and Hunter did, and this is his way of, you know, I would just think that that's. Not good business. Okay, I'll say and this. Sound, from, from the report uh, I sent you guys, too, uh, Vince was in uh, a lot more control at Raw. He was at the girl position on the headsets, all that. Yeah, but we, 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 could, we could get that from actual people that work there. So I don't know. I don't. Whatever your sources you're hearing it from, it's like we, we would have sources. Like I mm-hmm. could call Kidman and ask him. Yeah. Like and that would do that would be these like, that'd be the gorilla well, yeah because so, Kidman so, actually works in the gorilla position right mm-hmm. right so and like so so all these marks and these dirt sheet guys that think they know info like that everything I can make one phone call and just find out that you know whether that's accurate or not I guarantee it's not okay because the thing bro this is what they did with Cody okay is is Vince, and Vince McMahon was had his hands well bro that's classic baby face booking. Your baby face, white meat baby face, pretty boy, everything, just got pummeled by a monster, and beat down, and, and like you know, that's <laughs> I, don't, I mean, like, people that are thinking that, like I, I don't even know like like people that have never been in like like book before aren't even looking at it from from that spectrum. That's basic booking one on one with the, what they would do with Cody. Right, but now, in, base, in basic WWE booking, di like normally WrestleMania <clears throat> is the spot where you give the crowd what they want at the end, which would have been Cody winning, and they didn't do that. You well, but, okay, but, but let me tell you this: I, are, Is the company in a worse position with Roman still having the no. belt? No, of course no, not. Of course Nobody not. even thinks about that. They're like, "Oh my God, Cody was the guy. Cody was the right house." Like, no, that's because they were telling that we talked about this. They were telling this story in such an obvious path, okay, that every point in the story that was so obvious, they would hit it and get a huge pop when they hit it. Sammy cheering Roman in the back or Sammy getting accepted in the bloodline Sammy cheering Roman in the back Sammy and Kevin hugging Sammy and Kevin beating the Usos that like they finally swerved us because everything was so obvious that we assumed that Cody was going to win the belt and like they get at this point is when they hit us with the swerve and it, like it works because I bro I did Conan did you think that was going to be the finish? No. We're the smartest guys in the room because we talk about these booking. We talk about the angles. They swerved us. So that means they swerved everybody. You know what I'm saying? So, like, so I, you know, I, I'm not complaining about the finish because, like, people say, oh, my God, they're, Cody was a, the WWE's going to, like, no. They swerved you guys on an obvious finish, and they're very good at this, this bloodline storytelling. This angle has been told very well. They're going to hit the next few weeks, and it's going to make sense. So, what, 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 what do you agree with that, Conan? I'm not sure, you know, so we'll find out. But I, right. don't, I, I wouldn't think Vince is that petty, but I wouldn't put it beyond him either. And I, so. I, te- I, I, bro, I loved Cody's mic work on Raw. When he came out, he, he was very, you know, where everybody's talking about, like, you did not have me beat. You could, he could, bro, he could see, Cody's a great promo. Like, yeah. he, when, when in this spot as a top guy, he's one of the best in the business. Not only the that, mic, the, you people, know, so. the people were, like, with him because they were, <laughs> when he talked about, um, oh, no, no, that was Austin Theory and Ray. Okay, my right. bad. No, but yeah. I'm saying, he, like, he, he really hit all, he made perfect yeah. sense, and the people were with it, you know? Right. So it's like, so then Brock turned on him, and I think the storyline is, you know, it's kind of like 
off at the company for trying to like, like, why are you pushing this guy instead of me? You know, like, it's, it's, it's a great storyline going forward because, like, he can look at, like, Cody Rhodes and say, I just, I, I can beat the piss out of this guy. Yeah, I just Which can't is, see them spending all that time on Cody just to teach him a lesson. Exactly. It's a, it's a storyline. 100%. Yeah. Right. Now, you're not going to put a guy in a WrestleMania main event to teach him a lesson. <laughs> it's like, no. the guy's getting paid. Like, massive amounts of money for doing this. You know, like, that, that's another thing people don't realize. Like, his payday... It's like it's like through the roof tour. He does. He's not going to be upset about what they do with him. It's like, hey, fine. I'm, the, I, I'm getting paid way more money well, than I've ever made. That, they got a they got a baby face over, which isn't the easiest thing nowadays. So, why would you want to pull that off? All right. Next to some. That's a long uh, conversation. I want one email. So let's <laughs> go forward here. Rapid fire some of this stuff. If you got a <laughs> question, we're not going to spend a lot of time on it, right? So. <clears throat> these next 20 something emails, you guys better bring your game, your A game. Okay, the next is from Matthew Ince. Subject is Bischoff versus Cornette. There's a video around Reddit of how Jim Cornette, whatever Eric Bischoff's name is mentioned, goes radio silent. Yet Bischoff has taken not many, though, brutal shots at Cornette whenever he gets brought up. Why do you think Jim Cornette seems to fear Eric Bischoff? Also, do any of you guys listen to Kevin Nash's podcast? I had to top out, tap out, holy shit, it's bad. Um, okay, Matthew Ince, I don't, I don't agree us with that. How, two, how, two, how could that be? Two how atrocious could, takes. <laughs> two atrocious takes. Number one, I don't, I, I haven't, I don't listen to Cornette enough to hear him go radio side when he talks about Bischoff, but I know, bro, they did a table for three with Bischoff, Cornette, and who was, who else was it? Bruce Pritchard? Was Michael, on, on the, I think Michael Hayes was on it. Was like Michael the Hayes. Media. And they were all getting along, but they don't like, Bischoff and Cornette do not like each other. They have very drastic differences on professional wrestling. However, they do agree on most of the stuff today. But uh, it's funny how they, they've they decided to have heat with each other. Uh, bro, I have I listen to Kevin's podcast. You know, I listen to sound bites and stuff. And, they, and I've, I've sat, talked on the phone with this guy, sat in a car with him, spent tons of, tons of, tons of hours with this guy. And, like, I like listening to Kevin Nash talk about mm-hmm. anything. He's a great storyteller, and he like he's very intelligent, and like anybody that knows him would agree with that. Would you agree with that, Conan? Yeah, I don't, <gasps> I've never listened to Kevin's podcast because I don't even have time to listen to mine, much less anyone else. I'm too busy. But yeah, he's one of the wittiest, funniest guys around. Right. And him and Sean Oliver have had a great rapport for years too. You yeah. know, so. 